Senator, great to see you in Warsaw. Thank you very much for an Thank opportunity you. to ask you some questions. Sure, and of course, right. the first, uh, very important, is what's the main purpose of your visit in Warsaw? Can we expect uh, more cooperation of, of Polish space agency, Polish companies with NASA? Well, Poland is involved in the space program in a big way, and they will continue to get involved even more so. Uh, first, through the European Space Agency, ESA, uh, of which they are increasingly uh, getting a larger part of the activity. And secondly, uh, Poland will do bilateral projects directly with the United States. I'll give you an example. Uh, there will be a project that will be launched in 2025 that is going to measure solar wind, which are the solar explosions from the sun that sends out uh, radiation through space. That instrument is being built right here uh, and it will be launched uh, and uh, so there's a, an example, a scientific experiment with the United States. Uh, in ESA, ESA has just selected a new group of European astronauts. A Polish astronaut has been selected. And we fully expect him to be flying and eventually uh, come to the International Space Station. I met him during this visit, but I also met him a few weeks ago at Cape Canaveral at the Kennedy Space Center. Um, I was a little boy when I, from under the table, have an, had an opportunity to see the landing on the moon. And of course I dreamt about seeing the landing on the moon next time during my lifetime. And now it seems to be possible because we are going back to moon, then to the Mars, let me ask you about the Artemis program. Is this, this, is this a program for inspiration, like it was before, for science, for both? How much the inspiration part is still important? Okay, you've asked several questions, and let me uh, first uh, address the fact, yes, we are going back to the moon after a half century. Uh, in our going back to the moon this time for a different reason. We go to the moon uh, to live, to learn, to work, to invent, to create in order so that we can send humans safely to Mars and to return. This time we go to the moon in a different way. We go as an international mission not just the United States. And we go in a public-private partnership. So we go to the moon in the uh, Artemis vehicle with a spacecraft called Orion, all NASA, but we will rendezvous and dock with a lander first made by SpaceX, later to be made by another company, Blue Origin. So we are sharing as we go back. Now you ask the question, why? Is this for inspiration? Certainly, in part it's for inspiration. You should have seen the 500 high school students that I talked to today. I didn't see anybody in the audience go to sleep. They were riveted to the subject of space exploration and scientific exploration in space. But more than inspiration, we go to create. We go to invent. We create new space technologies on Earth for application in space, but it also has application here on Earth. And finally, uh, we also then are the beneficiaries, not only of the spinoffs, say, pharmaceutical products or the camera in your phone is an example of space technology. NASA developed that camera, uh, a camera on a chip. But we also create economic value because the space industry then multiplies in economics on Earth 
and it produces good paying jobs. You mentioned uh, new technology. Uh, what type of new technology? I mean, for example, nuclear propulsion. Uh, is NASA now considering the, the most interesting for the trip to Mars? Yes, we have to go faster to Mars because with uh, conventional chemical technology, it would take us six to eight months there. Once you got there, you'd have to stay a year or two uh, before you could get back six or eight months because of the alignment of the planets. So we need to sprint faster to Mars. That can be done with nuclear uh, thermal propulsion and especially you can go faster with nuclear electric propulsion. And we are experimenting on both of those right now. How the imagination of private entrepreneurs influences NASA? Because you are not competing, you are cooperating with private industry how that industry influences what you think, what you plan. Well, I'll give you an example. Uh, we give incentive, government money, to private industry to go out and invent. And in this case, they are doing private launchers and landers to land scientific experiments on the moon before we ever get there with humans. Another example, the incentive by NASA money to a space company, SpaceX in my example, which then develops the rocket and the spacecraft that is now commonplace, being launched every week and the spacecraft taking our crews to orbit to the International Space Station as well as cargo. So the system of incentive for private industry to produce has worked very well. Human space program is, is the most interesting and, and most uh, popular uh, among people, but you've mentioned that there are some objectives important, exploring space and protecting Earth. What do you mean by protecting Earth? To understand what's happening to our climate to understand what we need to do as stewards of the earth to preserve it. Uh, so all those instruments up there, NASA designed them, we built them, we launched them, and many of them we operate. We are putting up four great observatories in the next 10 years, and we will have a composite understanding of exactly what's happening to the planet. The land, the water, the ice, and the atmosphere. So that we, earthlings, can be better informed how to protect our planet. When we think about protecting planet, we think also about asteroids and about maybe extraterrestrial life. This is the area of uh, NASA uh, research, too. Uh, indeed. Let's take both of them. Uh, asteroids. We know that a very large asteroid, six miles wide, destroyed life on Earth millions of years ago when it destroyed the dinosaurs. So. We are now putting up missions to search for asteroids that might be killers. We wanted to see if we could hit an asteroid and move it. We did that last year. Uh, the asteroid was 7 million miles from Earth. And our spacecraft hit it at 16,000 miles an hour. And we moved it. So we now know if we can find a big asteroid that will threaten Earth far enough away and can hit it, we could just nudge it so that it doesn't hit Earth. Its trajectory will go by Earth. And so we are actively looking for those asteroids. Now you ask about aliens. Is there life out there? 
the universe is so big. 13.8 billion years ago, it was, it started, and we just captured light that has traveled at the speed of light for 13 and a half billion years at the speed of light with our James Webb Space Telescope. So is there the possibility of life that there's another sun and another stony planet that's just enough far so that it's not too hot, not too cold, and it has a chemical composition? So I asked that of our scientists. What is the mathematical probability that there's another Earth around another sun in the vastness of that universe? They said at least one trillion. So are we going to find some message from another intelligent civilization out there in interstellar space? We're looking and we're listening and we're searching. And that's part of NASA's mission, to search for life. A couple of days ago, it was a conference about so-called UFOs, or as it's called right now, UAPs. And uh, it was promised that NASA will be more open about the research. What do you think about it? Well, I, uh, I convened that panel, and that is their instruction, to be open. But we are open. We are a scientific research organization. So I asked them to look at the UAP phenomenon from the standpoint of science. Look at it with some of our sensors from the standpoint of science. So we'll see what they come up with. Let me ask you the last more personal question, if you may. Uh, you are a very experienced politician and you are experienced astronaut, so it's, it should be the, the, you should be the perfect person for the position of administrator of NASA. Uh, so, uh, what is the time to be the administrator of NASA at this very moment of our history, of the history of our technology? This is the golden age of space exploration, because now we see further with the telescope, we get more precise where we can hit an asteroid. We're sending humans further out into the cosmos as we go back to the moon to go to Mars. Uh, this is an exciting time. Uh, and I think uh, we Earthlings will be the beneficiaries, not only of learning new things about our origins, about who we are, about what we are, where we are in this vastness, uh, but that we will also uh, develop technologies that will help us here on Earth. And where we have the difficulties is our politics. We always want to divide, always separate. But if you could see Earth as I saw it from the window of a spacecraft, I did not see those divisions. I didn't see religious division, political division, racial division. I saw Earth as our home. We are all citizens of planet Earth. And if we could learn that and inject that into our politics, we'd be a lot better off. Thank you very much. Great pleasure to meet you here Thank you. in Warsaw.